Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Peachy from your um, WCA biology course. Today we're going to be doing the portfolio, the effect of cell size on material transport, which is part of this unit. And I'm going to kind of start with the PDF. In your lesson, there is a link for a PDF. When you open it up, it will bring you to a window. And it'll look like this right here. Okay, so what you want to do is you're going to right click on this and you are going to save this to your desktop or to a folder on your computer. And then you are going to close it, go to that folder and reopen it. And it should open using your um, Adobe Reader. Okay, so when you do that, then you can edit these windows and resave it and the changes will be saved and you can actually you then submit that to me and I will have all of the work that you've done. If you don't follow those directions then it will not save correctly. So again open it, save as and make sure you save it to your computer, close everything, open it back up from your computer and then you can make alterations to it. Okay and don't forget to save it a second time before you turn it in. So what you're going to be doing here is you're going to be checking out how cell size affects the ability of the cell to get its nutrients and get rid of its waste products. And so what we have to take into consideration is two different measurements, surface area and um, volume. Okay, so volume and surface area. So remember that volume is going to be the space inside of something and surface area is the area of all the surfaces that are touching the outside. That's important. So we're going to see if there's an ideal shape to a cell. So what you're going to be doing, I'm going to move this for a second here, is you are going to have a potato, a couple of potatoes for this lab, and you're gonna cut them so that the skin is off the potato. Okay, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut um, four different cubes of potato, and your first cube will be um, a half centimeter by half centimeter. Your second cube is going to be one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, right? So a cubic centimeter. Third cube is two by two by two. And fourth cube is three by three by three. Okay. And yes, I had to remind myself to buy potatoes. <laughs> All right. So to do this, you need a ruler and you need to be measuring it so that you get the right size. I will actually just do the one by one by one. So that's my second potato because, um, the first one's pretty small and I just be easier for me to work with the size. So I usually cut it to be a centimeter thick and then I go and measure a centimeter in width. Okay, which is approximately here. And then I do another centimeter. Okay. All right, so this is approximately one by one by one. It's not going to be perfect, but it's close. And once you're done, you are going to, done cutting up all four of your potatoes, you're going to need some iodine. You will not have this kind of iodine. This is Graham's iodine, which is kind of uh, an iodine that we use to help stain certain types of um, bacterial culture um, slides for looking under the microscope. You're going to need to go to the store and get some iodine. And one of the places um, that you can go you know, is a pharmacy of some kind. Walmart is a good place. Um, a lot of places have Walmarts near them. Um, let's see, where else? Uh, Q uh, CVS. Maybe... Walgreens. Lots of new, lots of different places would work. Here is just an example. 
if you will, of povidone iodine, iodine, excuse me. So you can see here that this is what the povidone iodine looks like from Walmart. You can find it near the bandages, um, near the band-aids, near the um, hydrocortisone salute, or creams and ointments, and then like um, hydrogen peroxide, rubbing alcohol. In that area is usually where you'll find it. However, if you can't find it, I would say ask the pharmacist because they would be happy to assist you. Or at least they should be happy to assist you. All right. So what you're going to do is we're just going to take some water and just pour in a few inches of water into a cup. You will probably not have this cup, but whatever. That would work. And then you're going to want to have some iodine. Um... I'm actually going to ch -ch -ch, get rid of a little bit of that. I believe the directions only call for a few drops of iodine. But I would say enough so that your solution turns kind of an, a dark, dark yellow or a light brown. Okay? Okay? And then you're going to Drop your potatoes in, and you should have all four of your potatoes cut. And then you're going to let it sit there for a good 15 minutes. Okay, so 15 minutes on the clock. Um, that's what the recommendation is in your book. However, I would even say that more time is better. So, in fact, from what I've seen for results, I would say let it set for a good hour. So I'll put an hour on the clock because that's kind of what I've seen um, in terms of, you know, how long it takes for this stuff to penetrate. So we'll go ahead and we'll put an hour. Okay. Good deal. Okay, so when that hour is done, what you're going to do is you're going to pull your potato cube out of the water. And you can just use your hands for that. You don't really need to use anything else, but if you'd rather not touch it, a tongs works okay too from the kitchen. And your potato cube is going to um, have changed color. The starch in the potato actually reacts with the iodine, and it indicates for the presence of a starch. So that's a... Uh, that's what star that's what iodine does with um with the starch. So what you're gonna see is as I cut it, and I can cut this a little bit more actually, you'll be able to observe how much that iodine has penetrated into the potato itself. And it's not very much, as you can see here. But you can almost make out this purple haze that goes just a little bit beyond the edge of the potato. So that's where I want you to measure to. I want you to measure to the edge of that purple haze. And here I would say it's approximately 2 millimeters, which would be 0.2 centimeters. Okay? 0.2 centimeters. So the reason why we're saying that is because it's not going to penetrate very far, but we do want to know, you know, how deep it is, and how that compares with the size of the potato. So then you've got some calculations to do. All right, so the two calculations you're going to make are surface area and volume. And don't forget that surface area means all sides of the cube. Ooh, everything turned blue. That's kind of funky. Okay, we'll go with that. So surface area, you take the length times width of one of the sides, because this is a, a cube, remember, right? So you don't have to do all sides. Length times width of one of the sides, and then you multiply that times 6. And that should give you a surface area for that cube. And then for volume, it's length times width times height. That's volume, okay? This will be, by the way, centimeters squared, and volume will be centimeters cubed.
And then for the surface area to volume ratio, what you're going to take is you're going to take the surface area and you are going to divide it by the volume. And you are going to take whatever that number is, put it here, and we're going to say this other number is going to be always 1, okay? So let's do a little bit of this math. We've got our first cube is 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter. No, I, I lied. I'm sorry. Our first cube is 0.5 centimeters by 0.5 centimeters. So length times width. That gives us 0.25. But remember, there are six sides. So 1.5 square centimeters is the surface area for the, the point for the half centimeter cube. Okay? The volume is 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. That's 0.125. That's the volume. Surface area to volume ratio, well, that's going to be 1.5 divided by 0.125. That's 12. So this gives us a 12 to 1 ratio for our half centimeter cubes. Okay. In other words, the surface area is 12 times bigger than the volume. Surface area is 12 times bigger than the volume. Okay. So now you're going to have to do the same thing for 1 centimeter, 2 centimeters, and 3 centimeters. Determine the surface area, the volume, and the surface area to volume ratio. Finally, you'll be answering the follow-up questions. So make sure you do the follow-up questions on here. Okay. Um, make sure you measure the var or figure out what the variables are. Remember, the independent variable is the one that you are changing, and the dependent variable is the thing that responds to the independent variable. I did it again. Okay, so if you end up with questions or concerns, you can feel free to give me a call at extension 2204 or send me a web mail message. Hopefully you guys have a great day and good luck with your portfolio.